Previously on Vice Grip Garage, a legendary battle ensued between a guy, that's me. <laughs> so anyway, and this 1981 Cadillac DeVille 864. The technician sticks. 321. Fuel injection rig. Look, a guy did get it running, that's me. But I gotta admit, Cadillac got the upper hand and the knockout. I was not able to drive this thing home. I ran out of time. But I'm back. I got this thing that says we're going to prom and it needs an echem on it. A carburetor and a service manual that's gonna do nothing. So let's take a second stab at the Cadillac here. See if we can get it fired up and down the road. Nope, probably not. You have a good project. Starts with the battery on boil. That's what I'm, that's what I got going on back here. I got this here service manual. It said it's to the Browgham Devil Leg Edition. Uh, listen, I browsed through this. The pictures are in color, which is great, but like what in the devil? Everything in here it's got switches and relays and doodabs and it goes to another thing that... Okay, listen, we'll probably forget that book. So here's the plan. I got a new computer, allegedly, all right? And that's supposed to plug in somehow with some other parts that I gotta add from the other computer. That's definitely not gonna work, but we'll try it. And if it runs with that, great. We'll just uh, continue to tune it up, clean it up, go for a tootle. If it doesn't, then we're really gonna tear into this thing and convert it to a carburetor setup and then do some tootling. I kinda wanna get it going as is because there are some Cadillac collectors out there and they just, this is a one year only vehicle, right? We need to respect that and just try to take care of it the way it is before we hack it to pieces and that's what I'm gonna do. Now, some of you had previously mentioned, it's the coolant sensor. It's the throttle position sensor. It's this sensor, that sensor, that sensor, or this sensor. And I ended up doing a tremendous amount of research and reading and whatnots. And it turns out for startup and idle, none of that does anything according to this here spaceship book. It should fire up and idle for at least 30 seconds, 45 seconds before it even calls on any of those sensors. We know it has fuel pressure. We know it has sparkles. It's, it's something else in the rig in here. I also forgot that the seat is maxed out all the way forward. That was fun, getting it into the positions. So anyway, let's dig back into this thing, see if we can get it running. So you may actually remember at one point, a guy did have this rig it was running for, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 minutes. I was actually packing up, getting ready to hit the road and then I quit. And then we had all sorts of issues. So I'm confident the engine is good. It's a great engine. The transmission does transmission things. I think we might've worked on the brakes. I know it's got a new fuel tank, charging whirler, belts. A lot of the hard work is done. It just doesn't run. So that's what we're gonna try to address here. It's got this crazy TBI on here and digital pump and tons of hoses. Ugh! See what I mean? Doodabs and whatnots everywhere. And then it's got a electronic spark control rig and an ECM, PCM, RBM, OHM computer box machine in here as well. And the legendary, never in, 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 imitated because it's terrible, 864 engine. So this would literally auto magically turn it from a V8 to a V6 to a V4. I'm not kidding. Great idea, work terribly. The ones that do work, the nine, still work excellent. This is not one of them. Okay, so 
The battery went dead, I think the door was ajar. And it's got, the lights in the door are like 12 by 12 squares. They look like a, a shower light at the YMCA. Those were running and drained on it, so I got it boiling right now. I think where we gotta start is digging into the computer on this thing and see if that's the issue. Allegedly, that's somewhere between there and here in here. So that should be really easy. And the reason we're thinking that is when we tried to pull a code out of this here unit, it was like, it, it had, it said north, south, yellow, banana. Then it had a smiley face and then it was nothing and then it would blink. And then it did, it looked like a calculator from 1992. And I, we think that's the computer just not doing computer things. Cause we've got to remember this sat outside forever. Moisture likely got into it. Well, I can tell you, <coughs> excuse me, there's moisture in here is what I'm saying. And that probably killed that computer. So boy, I wish maybe we just take the seat out. We need some, we need some elbow room. Let me feel around. Nope, too difficult. Let's leave the seat here. I think it's good and we can lean on it. See? So let me uh, confirm computer location and let's just start digging into this thing. By the way, plus a who, this is the box that allegedly runs this entire rig. It looks like something that was in a typing class in 1987, but I guess this is actually the thing. And it says we're going to prom and uh, call the Ghostbusters, because we got an ectoplasm or something that we're gonna have to change over. But this was remanufactured in Mexico, and it's got a QA sticker on it, so you know it's good. You know, that should be fine. Difficult to find. So we're gonna leave that back here so we don't forget about it. So a guy flipped through the book here, and I think I found where I'm supposed to be. By the way, speaking of flipping, if you remember index cards, in the library. Hit the bleep bloop section. I'm just curious because I had to dig through all the index cards just to find a book, you know, about hot rods or whatever. Now I guess it's digital. Speaking of digital, I found the electronic control module. This swervy doodab, I guess, is that. And we got the relay convenience center, of course going into that, which has the injector one and two, which goes into other relays. And then we've got fuel pump relays, fuel pump fuses, injector relays. Basically, it's a lot of fuel and ignition that tie into this thing. But anyway, if we go over here and we find this component location, which is one of the reasons I wanted to buy this thing, is just to figure out where in the world is everything in this car because they packed it in. I ain't kidding you. It says behind drinker side of I forward slash P below the glove box. I don't know what, I don't know why we have internet protocol in here. Seems a little old to have Wi-Fi's. But anyway, below the glove box, I know where that's at. So this confirms we can try to dig in there, pull some plastic, break a few things, try to find this box. So I'm gonna to try to get there under here first, and then we might dig into this. Well, maybe this would be faster. We got some Felipe's. Got these Felipe's here. Maybe I'll try to take them out. If that doesn't work, then we'll come down here and we got some of these things and uh, mouse house back here and take that out. And, ooh, actually, that looks promising, right there. So change of plan number 47, let's just take this out and see if we can see that box. I think that's the corner of it. I could be wrong, but I think that's the corner of it right there. So I got this cover off over here and I got looking up in here, kind of interesting. See how this side has a nut right there. This side does not. So I am not the first human being or alien that's been in here. And it feels like 
that computer box is laying on its side. So I might still go ahead and uh, take this out just to get a better perspective as to what in the devil is going on in there. And the connectors then would be, I think they would be on the back of this, would they not? So I think, it's either sitting like this or like this. I guess they would be on the side, but the prom date's on the one side. I don't know which side that is. I think it might be sitting like that. I got updates and we're on to something here, fellers. This is a zip tie. Look at this. GM ain't fooling no one. I like it. It's approved. Anyway, got this out and we could see the heater door. Look, and remember we were talking about moisture? Look at that case. That thing is soaking wet or has or was or has been 54 times. More importantly, we got this beep boop box right here, which has wire shooting out of it, right? On this side, I know that's a vacuum fitting. Where's the line? There ain't a line to it. And that is going to be one of the connections that this thing is looking for. Coolant, map, which I think this is. TPS, some other words and syllables, and things like that. So, let me get the book out again, figure out what that thing is, and figure out where the line is supposed to be, because I'm not seeing anything loose or hanging in here at all, yet. <sighs> now we're in it. Here we are. It is not manifold pressure. It's right above it, it says oxygen sensor. But how does that work? Well, up here it says the oxygen sensor derives from the rear exhaust manifold into the clip doodabby 417 over to the S451, of course, and then comes around to it. What in the world? Oh. Well, that was a rabbit hole a guy didn't need to go down, I don't think. Um, dig it through this thing. I don't think anything actually hooks to the back side of that. It's using the oxygen sensor in the exhaust system as a current measurement. And then I think it might be pulling air from the other side. Comparing the two and then it sends voltage to the ECM for a fuel mixture based on the uh, Terminator Broccoli injection system, or at least that's how I'm deciphering all this junk. So I think we're just going to continue to go ahead and try to swap that thing out. I was hoping for a super easy fix, but you know, that's the way it never goes. <sighs> yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> Sure. And I think I gotta take that guy out. Oh, she's just flappalizing. Is this loose? Yeah, see this has already been out. So this might be why this car was parked. I wonder if it went to a service center or something. It's having issues. And uh, you know, someone just gave up and parked this thing. Oh yeah, there's a bolt on the bottom still. And that's why I got it so cheap. I said, get this out of my life. Okay. Guy could put a hurricane in here. I ain't kidding you, look. So now this thing's flopping around in here pretty good. I just gotta figure out how to run these connectors. I think I need to get a vice grip in here. Yeah, yeah. That's how you remove that. Okay, there we go. Hip, yep, hip. Uh, there they are. Get these unplugged somehow. Jiggle, jiggle, wiggle, pull, bend. Might need a tire iron. 
pry on them, I'm thinking. And then it should just come out through the uh, mitten box here. Let me keep working on this for a minute. But I'm making grounds. The grounds is we're making it. Oh, finally. General Motors. I wonder if that's the ridge. You, oh boy, look at that. This must be where the prom dance is. In here? How do you run it? Open. Is this blue teeth? I don't know. If I gotta connect my phone. Oh, yeah. That looks important. Left brain, right brain. Great. So a guy just pulled that computer out. Let me tell you something. If any of y'all was a dealer technician back in the early 80s, mucho respect, okay? First of all, how do you fit your mitt in there? Third of all, what are you looking at? <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I don't think I broke any of the connectors and the prom dates are still connected. So now I'm gonna transfer those over to the new beep bop box and try to get that in and reconnect the connectors that I couldn't see or feel previously, then I guess we're gonna try to fire it up, right? Because that'll fix everything. <laughs> nope. So, I don't really know, I mean, are these like a tick? You hold some heat on them and back them out, or we just pry on it with the croissant wrench? I mean, they feel really attached to the board. I don't wanna but they look like pins. Oh. Okay. So this must be the radio stations. That's, I'm gonna say that's what it is. It's the memory for that. Now this isn't fitting back into here. Great. Oh boy. Okay, well. Oh, that didn't feel right. Let me um, let me figure this out real quick. This, I don't know. Boy, the carburetor option is feeling pretty good right about now. Tell you that much. Okay, guys, got these in. I got to be honest, that was really tricky. Took me a minute. I ended up taking these soup cups off or whatever this is. Not really sure. I think they help remove them. But if I remove this again, it's going to be with an axe and a fire extinguisher. So I'm not really worried about that. But all these tiny little spider leg thingy magoos that go into the widget maker beep boops, they had to be precisely correct. And that was, that was a bit of work. But anyway, that's in. I think the only thing I got to do now is move these things over to here. And then we could slide this. This must be the bottom based on this was missing a nut. This one had one. There was only one on the top. So yeah, this is the bottom section here. So move these over and we'll get it back in. Okay, computer beep box back in, bolted up just the way it was. Even put the foam spacer in there, fixed the air duct thing. Now I just got to put the mitten box cover back in and we'll be ready to rock. I must have bumped the don't like because now that thing is rocking did not put the uh prom thing cover back on because i just don't know where we're going now okay i don't know but we'll get this side done anyway well i guess we're just going to twist on the key see what happens we got the new fuel pump tanks already been done i think we've been through pretty much everything else new beep bop box we got to start somewhere this is twist on it See if this thing fires right up. Come on now. Yep. Whoa, lots of stuff clicking. And a dead battery. <laughs> That's weird. I think the dome lights just zapped this one. Let me, uh, do I got one on the shelf with the side posts? Don't think I do. 
What is going on with my battery charger? Why ain't that charging it? Well, I guess the guy is going to take this lightning cube out. I'll put her on boil mode somewhere next to something flammable. Maybe over by them gas cans. And I'll see what else I got around here that's been in 17 vehicles. And we'll throw that in. But I did hear a whole bunch of clicking and clacking when I turned the key to on, which we didn't have, I don't think, or remember anyway, last time. So digital stuff is waking up. That's a good thing. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Okay, throw this bad boy in here. This ought to flip it on its roof. It's a bigger one. How many CCAs? 750? You could run a block of bigs with this. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be something if this just fired right off and just sat here and ran like nothing? I mean, Save a guy a bunch of work, let's be honest. Also, would be pretty darn cool to have this thing running on all the original. Beep, pop, boop, pop, beep. I'm a computer. Stuff. Let's try this again now. Do we have windows yet? Go down. Now. Nothing. Whole bunch of clicking. Lights are on. Nothing. I don't think I'm hearing a fuel pump, or am I crazy? Didn't we just replace that? <laughs> uh oh. Um, we've somehow went backwards with a new computer. Ooh, let's see if we can pull the codes out of this bad boy. I remember last time we tried to do that. How do, what buttons did we push? Low and up. Up and cold. Off and AC together. Or was it three buttons? It was low and high and hot. No. It was floor defrost and cold for three seconds. No, it was off and warmer. Let's try to pull some codes on this thing. So, as you don't remember, we held buttons in here and it was supposed to tell us codes, but it was coming up as complete gibberish and nothing over here was happening. And I had come to the conclusion that the computer was bad, and that's why this was happening. So let's see. Key on. Okay, so this is already much better. We have a zero over here. It's not doing anything. I don't know that it should, though. Okay, that's actually changing now. And I can hear the door moving. That never happened before. Okay. Off and warmer. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Off and warmer. Nothing's happening. Wait. Wait. 88. 12. 15. 30. 36. 88, 12, 15, 30, 36. Remember that. Let's go look it up. So 88 says display check. I think that's just saying you're in check mode. Uh, 15 is open coolant sensor or temp sensor. Okay. I think I have one of those actually. 30 is idle speed motor. That doesn't sound good. Idle speed control motor circuit. 36 is barometric pressure sensor, which we were just playing with, or had our hands on it. 
by the IAP mitten box. 12 is a no tax signal here. Okay. Now this is actually really good news because I believe I unplugged some stuff or was unplugging stuff when we parked this car up. Trying to diagnose things or see if it made a difference. There's a chance some of this is just currently unplugged. So let's dig in here and take a look. And if that's the case, more good or it's better news. The beep box is actually beeping something. So that would be great. Okay, cool it temp sensor. Okay, that's this guy. Okay, that's unplugged. That's my bad. We'll get that figured out. This is the spark control. That is also unplugged. Okay, we're doing good. Doing good so far. This is the idle motor. This is what would do the high speed idle. That is plugged in. It's with some really good connectors. And the barometric widget box is under the dash. So let me plug these two things in, see if that does something. So I don't, admittedly, I don't know how to uh, delete on codes in here. There's no control alt delete buttons on the uh, temperature box there. Maybe just unhooking the battery for a while, but nonetheless or more, let's try to crank it a couple times with the coolant sensor plugged in and the spark control or timing control plugged back in and see what that does. And then we'll run the code diagnostics again, see if it recognizes those are back and we'll kind of just keep in our, keep in, keep in the work, we'll work our way into it right now. Okay. Yep. Lots of beeping. Oh, it fired! Come on, stay running, stay running, stay running. <laughs> yes! Oh, it's running! Oh, wow. Oh, man, that is fantastic. This dang old computer box. Yes. Let's crack on it and see what we get. Oh yeah. It's right there. You know, these 368s were actually very good engines. They were reliable, they did the thing. It's this darn V8 one thing that gave them a bad rap. This is awesome. I was really thinking, we're gonna have to go with the fuel, make it happen here. Oh, hey, this is the longest it's ran. Just jump in, see if we could do the diagnostics again, see what that engine light's about, and do some more decoder ring stuff. Okay. I don't think I'm hitting it right. The buttons might be a little sticky or maybe you can't do it when it's running. I'm scared to shut it off though. Oh, there we go. Okay, display, we know that. 12, 15, 30, 36. 12, 15, 30, 36. Well, nothing has changed. This is a title. But anyway, nothing's changed, so maybe we could try to clear the codes and then run it again and see what it says. Out of nowhere, this just started working. Starting to slowly come back around. That side? Yep. Look at that. I'll be dead. It's ra raining. I don't know if I want to run them all the way down. Lights? Yep. Yeah, oh boy, she's lit up like a Christmas tree up here. I must got the brights on. 
Well, as scary as it seems, I actually shut her down. Not even gonna try to restart it yet, but it's starting to come back around. The power windows never worked. They're starting to work. The power seats never worked. The motors are running, but the seat's not moving, which means the GM plastic gear explosion has happened. Power locks haven't come around yet. We got lots of lights. Maybe I'm getting re-excited about stuff I was excited about before, but this is a 62,000 mile car and that just, it tickles my bottom left foot. I gotta be honest. Okay, now I gotta do some research on how to reset the computer because there's nothing in the manual on that. So I'm gonna get on the line and go through the interwebs and I might even plug in the 86421 activation thing because I think if you hold active cylinders or something like that, there's a process where you can test and actually turn the car to six cylinder into four cylinder and test that system. And I would really love to hear that. I've never heard that in my life. I would love to hear it in person and show you guys and see if that even still works, but we're getting through it. So it was the computer, obviously. And uh, we don't have to cut this thing up, which is also good news. Okay, let me, uh, let me do some research. Let's see what I can find here. <laughs> Boop. I kind of sort of almost like you now. That's pretty good. Okay, I just read somewhere that off and high would be the clear, and it should say zero, zero. I don't think that's doing it. Come on. Come on now, just do something on the computer. Make make things happen. No. Well, maybe it did. Let's try off and warmer again. By the way, why don't they just have a check codes button? No, they're still there. 12, 15, 30, 36. Okay. 88. I might say 70 and then exit. Come on. Give me a 70. There we go. Out it goes. Off and high. 90. I didn't seem to do anything. Well, I'll keep looking. So I have been unsuccessful erasing the codes, however, more so, I want to test the 864 cylinder deactivation thing. Ooh, tater tot hot dish. That's what I had for supper. I need to uh, get in here and plug back in the cylinder deactivation stuff first. And, boop. Okay. And boop. Okay, sure. This one is here. I got one more back there. Okay, first of all, let's see if this fires up again. Immediately. Wow, okay. So now we're going to go into programming. Come on, get in there. Hook in the programming. That's hemp. There we go. Okay. I think I hit. I gotta wait till 70, I think. And then I hit instant average over here, and it should take me to another menu. Come on now. Okay, I think I'm there, it's on six. All right, wait, no, it's gotta go to 95 first. Yeah, that's not working either. I think it's supposed to show a 95 and then instant average would be eight. Reset would be six, and active would be four cylinder, but I can't get into it. 
I wonder if these are slightly different by year. This seems like a lot of garbly goop going on with pushing buttons and stuff. Huh. I can't get that to work either. There is some sort of mile per gallon calculator beep boop box that's separate than the other one. If the main computer was bad, it's probably likely the other one's bad too. So I could get on the line and dig into that if you guys want to see, you know, that stuff work, the 864 thing. I think it would be pretty neat, but I don't have any experience in it. So, okay, now I'm going to unhook the battery, let the computer drain down again, as risky as that sounds, because I'd like some of those codes to go off or disappear if possible. And then I'm going to throw some gasoline in this and uh, we'll start testing some other stuff out on this car. It's supposed to have auto level and I don't know. We'll just start working through it. What happened to the door here? I don't remember that. That's too bad. Anywho, guys got this up in my teeth while that uh, computer's draining down. I think I'm going to try to put some sort of muffler on this thing because if you remember, I gently removed this one previously. I just can't believe this. Oh. Okay, it's off. It came off of there, all right? Now it's just obnoxious and the exhaust fumes are going straight into the floor and I really do want to drive this car. It's beautiful. So I've got one stick. I got one big stick and one little stick, a two and a half. And I'm gonna figure out how to, to use the bender, I guess, and try to be a muffler man. This is gonna be fine. Nope, definitely not. By the way, I forgot to put an oxygen sensor in this, a new starter. We got all sorts of good stuff. One brake, I fixed that it looks like. Wow. So the first thing I gotta do to be able to slip the pipe over the old one is to spread it out. So we're gonna use this guy right here. And that'll give us a little boop to slide over the other one. Then we'll uh, start running bends. Yep. Ah! Boop. Mm -hmm. Feeling pretty good about that. Try her out. I went a little hot on the uh, stretch, but that's all right. Now I got a little band to get by the cross member. I gotta go fairly hot here. I can't even read this. What am I looking at? To get by the drive shaft, and I'm gonna run down that to kick it back over again and try to put the uh, muffler back there. Which muffler? I don't know yet. Let me ruin this stick of pipe first. I'm back. We got more bendage to do. This is where I'm gonna get really mixed up. Watching my buddy Chad do this is just unbelievable. Machine's crushing the pipe a little bit. I got something going on with this die set. I'll have to look into that a little bit later. I think I got a pert well has the shape down. I gotta flare that out, fit a muffler. I'll show you what I'm gonna use. Guy's gonna go with this Borla because if you notice, it's already been stretched and bent and welded onto something else. So I'm just gonna flip her this way. We'll flare this one out a little bit. Get her to line up a little bit better with this guy. Close her eyes and weld it with her feet. Piece of cake. And then I gotta figure out how to run a hanger. That'll never happen. Just let it break the manifolds. Yeah, okay. So here's my pipe, 
comes back, kicks over through the trans cross member, comes down the drive shaft here, kicks back over here, and then this is where the muffler is going to go. And then I figure we'll run a hanger off the end of the muffler where the other one was, so I'll pop that bracket off quick, and then uh, I'll go weld that into place or tack it into place. And then we'll see if we can get this muffler on back here. Okay, here we go. Get out of there. What could be happening? Why wouldn't they put something on the back hinder? I wonder if I could use that same bolt hole. Maybe even the same bolt. Now we're saving money. Speaking of saving money, there's a AC Delco fuel filter on here from 1981. Pretty confident on that. It's pretty cool actually. Well, never getting that out of there. I can't believe it. Well, I am looking right at it, I guess. Well, it ain't gonna be perfect. Especially where I cut in 15 times up here trying to get the other exhaust off. It's going to leak, but it's going to get most of the exhaust fumes back, which is what we're going for. So I'm going to grab the welder, run 15 extension cords to that because I only got one plug in here, you know. Okay. Is that going to do it? I don't want to hang it down though. You know, the D low. Okay, let's buzz her in. <laughs>
There ain't nothing wrong with that. I'll show you now. Get up in here with your teeth. She's hooked up. Well, at least we double checked anyway. So now we go back up. Not so fun nor easy part. So that means the line is bad up to the front or the gauge later and gauge late. One of the six. Now, I couldn't believe there's electrical problems in this car. So, you know, it's got to be wiring, of course. I, uh, is this thing close to fitting? Well, it may be. I just run this one up a little bit. Get rust in my eye, dip a boo. Whatever happened to Bone Thugs and Harmony? Well, could it be that connection right there, maybe? Doubtful. Well, guys, got the battery back on. We know it's going to have a leak up here. Still going to be kind of loud, but should have that Borla sounder. Starts pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Put a foot on it. Nice. Well, the guy did run the diagnostic codes again, and we're down a couple. We're gaining. Now we're down to 30 and 36, which is the idle speed motor. When we roll the key forward, that's what's going clickety click, click, clack, click, clack, click, click. And then uh, the barometric pressure sensor because it's an airplane. You need them, you know. So I'm going to scour the inner waves and see if I can find them. Probably not. Here's what I'm thinking. Since it starts and it runs, and I've started it four or five times now consistently, i got to run up to Nashville tomorrow anyway to run some errands. Maybe we jump into this, throw some tools in the trunk, and just go for it. Ugh. It'd probably be... Is that 60, about 120, 130 mile round trip, something like that. That'd be fun. And then we could break down and miss our appointments. All right, let's uh, put an air filter in it. Get the air filter lid on, button that up, slam the hood, hopefully never open that again. Take a look at the seat, try to move that, probably give up and call it a night. I don't know, let's see what happens. I got an air filter for it somewhere. I predicted this one. Not an expert. But I don't think the motor is supposed to look like that in there. Wow. Common issue on these cars. GM's in the 80s. BLPCs. I found the seat belt bolt are nuts. That's going to be near impossible. And the front ones are back here. So what I'm going to do is get a little drill. And uh, hook the drill up to these. And that might move the drinker side enough to, for me to figure out which cable does what then maybe I could break the motor apart enough to get a drill on this side I don't know just grasping at Kawa's feet at this point okay let's give it a try I'm on the first one looks like yellow it's gonna go up tilt down or go backwards or forward I guess oh it's going backwards yes Okay, I don't want to get her too twisted up here. So clockwise on the yeller is back. Now I got to figure out how to, oh, these are different colors on this side. Hmm, all right, this is gonna take a minute to figure out which pipe goes into which gear, which goes into what hose and reduction coupling for this side. And I'll just have to keep working back and forth to try to get this back. Right now it's all the way forward. The old owner must have been I don't know, five foot two? Maybe. <laughs> this is incredible. I got it, guys. And this car just became that much better because a guy can actually fit in the darn thing. Now we have all sorts of room for activities. You can see how far back we went. Here's those bolts I was after. What is this? Oh, that's the cover to the relays. This interior is just amazing. It's really, really good. Too bad about the headliner. 
but we are pretty much good to go for tomorrow. I wonder if I should scrub the blue walls off quick. That's kind of, I don't know, it's wearing on me. Guys using my coffee cup from this morning with some hot water and soapy steel wool and that's taking it right off. And then whatever falls on the floor, I'll just get the mop bucket out. I gotta do my nightly cleaning anyway. So I need some sort of water and soap down. Boom. Nailed it. But yeah, this is looking a lot better. We just ran out of time. I didn't get to do nothing of much else with the rig. But uh, this tire, where was that? It was concerning. Oh, right here. I think the belt is already going wonky on me. What's the deal? You can't buy the cheapest tire on the internet and have them last? Well, that looks much better. And there's one more thing that's been bothering me here since the beginning. While the wire wheel look can be pretty traditional for the Cadillac DeVille, the Coupe de Villes, these are actually Oldsmobile. Yeah, see? But I got a fix for that. We can take these off. I found something to replace this. Remind me to run this through a car wash tomorrow. We can't be running around with it dirty like this. Any hoops. Yep. Yeah. Break the wrist. Break the wrist. Yep. Yeah. Set them aside. And, oh yeah. Come on now. As Uncle Rick would say, woo! That looks not, that kind of doesn't look as good as the other ones, does it? But it's correct and it's Cadillac. So, you know, boom, $3 added value. It was actually pretty hard to find this out, if I'm being honest. Oh yeah, it, it looks better. They just gotta get cleaned up a little bit. Ooh, that should rattle really nice going down the highway. <laughs> Perfect. Who would have ever guessed the guy would get ripped off on Evil Bay? These are all supposed to be functional, working, good condition with some dings and tarnishes. Well, that's fine, but look at this. Well, I was gonna fix it because that back one was loose. You flip it over. Oh, wait a minute, two of the three Things is snapped off. Oh, so now I'm gonna run a self tapper down through there. It's just the way she goes. And uh, we'll put it up here so when the center comes flying off, we could see it sail over the car. And if we're lucky, it'll take the mirror off as an indicator the hubcap's broken. Well, you guys can bleep bloop it down below what you think about those. Haven't decided yet. I just, maybe I gotta see it outside. Speaking of outside, it's very, very late. I'm gonna fire this thing up, back it outside, get a few hours of sleep, and then in the morning, we'll hit the gas station, fill this thing up, try to make it all the way to Nashville, since we got important things to do, and back. Should be a good test for it though. Stop and go traffic, highway, through town, you name it. Percentage of breakdown possibility, 89.376. See you in the morning. Well, good morning. Back in the shop, working on the Cadillac de Billet. Bentley's out here, he's gonna vacuum this thing up for me. And uh, he's gonna ride with me, actually, up to Nashville. And I'm going to take a look at the wiper blades because it might rain today and uh, tested them quick last night when I parked it. Nothing. Otherwise, we'll just rain exit. But I should at least wipe the glass off. I don't think I ever even, even did that. But good news, it fired right up this morning immediately. Bentley actually drove it in here and I said, what do you think? And he said, comfortable, but messy. So that's why he's going to vacuum it up quick. I'm going to take a look at the wipers. Bentley's building a new vacuum. The last one I filled so terribly full of hantavirus 
and gasoline that we decided to get rid of it. This one's got wheels on it. Hope to keep it around. These are not getting cheaper, I'll tell you that much. You got enough constructions? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I just kept hitting the switch, verified it got power here. And then all of a sudden it just took off. I'm gonna get in here and lubricate the arms while it's moving. And uh, I think it might just be a, a wonky switch with a bunch of moisture in it. It's a bunch of grass and stuff in here too. That doesn't help the smell. But... We'll start with the wide one first. Guy popped the trunk open. I forgot I put all this in here. So it looks like we can run Berryman all the way up there. Got a flare tool. This stuff's hard to find. They only sell that in the Midwest, the copper clad steel. Some gas jugs, pretty good score. I need that fuel line for another project coming up. So I'll grab a couple cans, dump it in the fuel tank now, and then uh, on the way home we might pour even more in, depending on what kind of mileage we're getting out of this thing. Well, we're going to run to a different town that's closer, get some gas, and run this thing through a car wash. You can't drive a Cadillac around dirty. Come on. Then, uh, then we're going to get ready, throw some tools in. What else do we need? A Leatherman. Then we're going to see if we can make it all the way up to Nashville and back. <laughs> well, we're cruising along in the Caddy. It's shifting great. It drives beautifully. And the mile per gallon Sentinel thing did click on. We got eight cylinders. I had to press that active cylinder button, but those buttons are sticky. But we have not been able to get it to change to six or four based on throttle position or speed. Like if I coast down this hill, you know, we're doing 3540, I'll let off the throttle, that should switch to four cylinders. And it's not. So I think that mile per gallon computer thing probably also needs replaced like we were talking last night. but. We're enjoying the beautiful drive, go get some fuel, wash this thing up, and then we're gonna head to Nashville, I guess. Boy, it's idled down now. It sounds really good. Hopefully we get to, when we fill this up, the fuel gauge comes back around. Maybe it was just low enough, it wasn't reading. So I'm gonna top this thing off and hope that that works. It sure would be nice in this rig. Bradley jumped in with us too, so. We may go to lunch if we make it to Nashville. We don't get to town much. It's slow, but the fuel gauge is coming around. Just easing up. But that means literally everything on this dash works. With the exception of the mile per gallon thing that's a little bit wonky. Well, Bentley, you think it's gonna leak? Probably. Bradley, what do you think? Possibly yes. I'm gonna say no. Cadillac, buddy, by Fisher. Actually, I have no idea. But it is a two-door, which gives us a better advantage and no leaks. But we'll see what happens here. I had another code flick on, and we checked it. And now we have a generator out of, what was it? Generator out of voltage? Out of range. Out of range. So maybe the new charger whirler isn't whirling right? So we're going to swing back home and throw a jump box in because that'll fix it. So far, not a single drop has come through. You guys seen anything? Mm -mm. That's pretty impressive for being 40 some years old, 40 and a half years. I just remembered from when we were working on this in Missouri, there's a connector unplugged at the transmission and I bet you that's why it's stuck in eight cylinder mode and not switching, it doesn't have a speed input. So I'll look into that a little bit later, I guess. But done with the car wash, got fuel, head back home, grab a jump box and we're on the highway.
swear I probably been by one minute by the hair of my earlobe. It was close. We also had a huge kabang going down the highway. Didn't realize what it was until I just got back into the rig. We got hub cabbage down. Remember the loose one? We self-tapped that one together. This one was still a little woggly. Sure enough, kicked the center out, went everywhere. Jessica met me in town. We're gonna go get a bite to eat, throw some groceries down her neck, let the car cool down. Then I'll pop the hood, see what's going on there with that thing. Hey, Bentley. Yeah. Why do we think it might be getting hot? Uh, zero coolant in it. Oh. So, I don't know where that escaped to. Uh, do you want to pull the oil dipstick and let's see if we got some yubu cooking? Very good. I did. Yeah. Well, we don't have any milkshake. Mm -mm. Fur. The only thing I could think of, because I know I filled that up last time I worked on this, that maybe when I thought the thermostat was open, it wasn't. So ripping down the interstate, the thermostat finally opened, and now it's just a gallon or two or 12 low. So let's go to a parts store, get some coolant, and I'm just gonna loosely put this on here so we don't build a bunch of pressure, get it topped off. Well, we're headed back home. Guys got her filled up, but the uh, light keeps coming on and off. Might just be a bad sensor, because it's sure not acting like it's overheating at all, but. We're going to hit a traffic jam up here again, so I guess we'll get some more stop and go traffic in it. See what it's actually going to do. Yep! She is getting hot. Just shut down on us. So we're going to coast as far as we can, I guess, and hit the side of the road. Let this thing cool down. We still got like 45, 50 miles, I think. But something's going on. I don't know if it's water pump or thermostat or head gasket or the other head gasket or engine or I don't know maybe it's because the passenger mirror isn't adjusted right she hot she hot everywhere oh belts are on Weird. I wonder if the belt's slipping on the water pump pulley, because notice how I can turn the alternator and the water pump, but the crank is what turns the water pump on that side. So that's kind of interesting. But we're going to go uh, shop for hats and, I don't know, Carmelo? Let this thing cool down. Some good news, I found the original wing nut. So that's pretty neat, front pocket find. Got a couple uh, things of water. Gonna start slowly easing this back down the temp. Sounds like I'm making eggs back here, but we're just uh, slowly dumping water. And don't wanna splash you know, ice cold water on a overheat motor. You can crack a head or intake or something like that. But we're just easing it down, easing it down. And I am very surprised we didn't pop a hose. It's got original clamps on it and everything. Could be the original hose. Look at that. Bentley's helping me fill these up. We found a spigot on the side of the building over there. That's nice. Yes, sir. Well, she did fire back up. Just gonna keep adding and make sure that I can see this thing circulating. Well, we made it to our storage lot. We're not gonna make it all the way home, unfortunately. Keeps getting hot over and over. It's circulating, the thermostat seems to be opening. So, I don't know, I'll have to do a pressure test or something down the road. Uh, gonna get back home. We're gonna jump in the 55 Chevy. That's actually out here. Just dawned on me as we were passing through this small town 
that we can get into that and get back home. I'll make some room out in the barn and get this thing under an awning or maybe even inside. I hate to have this sitting outside. It's in too good a shape, but the car does need some work yet. We put 122 miles on today. Not bad for its first drive in many, many, many years. And the computer won. Well, we didn't have to put the fuel make it happen or on, which that's kind of a blessing. We would have had to have really cobbled into this thing, and I'm glad we were able to keep it a ridge. Also, as we were pulling in, randomly, the radio just started working. The seek function works, the scan function, the balance and fade. I don't know. It's trying to say, give me a minute. I was taking a nap, you know? But, yes, it will run and drive. And now it's a guy, one, Cadillac, is it a tie? Or is it a guy, zero, Cadillac, one, tied one? Or did I win this one? I don't know. You guys bleep bloop it. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you all very, very much. And hey, we'll see you very soon.